Hello and welcome to episode 85 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. And today's topic is what happens to your disc after herniation. This is a topic that is extremely misunderstood. It's also a mystery. A lot of people are told, hey, once your disc herniates and it loses that jelly in there, you're done. You're over. It's weak. It's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. Many individuals are crushed by the information that they're provided. And as always, I'm going to provide you pretty much the exact opposite of what 99% of the healthcare system tells you because about 99% of the information out there regarding musculoskeletal pain, especially lower back pain, is wrong. It is fear-mongering. It is part of the fragile mindset telling you you're broken and all this crap. We're going to dispel yet again more myths more fallacies that are being spread. If you have not joined my private Facebook group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program, you need to do so. You will be immediately tagged in our free step-by-step Sataka guide that we use to help thousands of clients around the world that we have worked with one-on-one resolve their Sataka. This will give you an initial process to how you can determine how to resolve your Sataka and a plan to carry forward. And we are here to help you and guide you, of course, as well, if you feel committed enough to do so. Now, today's discussion, okay? You have a herniation. What happens? You get a macrodiscectomy. What happens? Is that fluid, that nucleus pulposus, just gone? Is it gone? I was contacted by one of our current clients who's out in Saudi Arabia. And um, he actually requested this and I thought it was a great idea because he was told, hey, once that herniates and that, you know, that fluid is out, the jelly is out, it's gone. And, you know, basically you're screwed, like lifelong problems, you're done, your disc is weak forever and all that nonsense that people are told. Drives me nuts. This is what encourages me and motivates me to create free content like this to get out to the world. So. Let's get right into this, okay? You have a herniation, the fluid comes out, it's a it's a sequestration, it's pouring out. Whether it's still in there and you're discussing the regression of the disc or you get it cut out through a microdiscectomy, I'm gonna discuss the possibilities for what can happen to your disc after a herniation, okay? So first off, what is the nucleus pulposus comprised of? The nucleus is made up of three things, okay? Proteoglycans which is basically a gag matrix, a glyco, glycosaminoglycan complex matrix, okay? Proteoglycans, collagen type 2 fibers, and water, okay? Now, I got some cool studies that we're using today. The one that I'm currently referencing is the physiological loading can restore the proteoglycan content in a model of early IVD, intervertebral disc degeneration. Okay, this will be uh, listed in the show notes. And so what we're going to discuss is this process, okay? What's in there, how it changes. And this was a really cool study because what they did is they took intervertebral discs. They took discs, okay? And they had two sets. One set was injected with trypsin. Trypsin is a digestive enzyme that breaks down proteins, Okay, this was injected to spawn the loss of proteoglycan content. Okay, so remember, the nucleus, the disc, is comprised of proteoglycans, collagen, and water. When you have a herniation, you're losing proteoglycans, collagen, and water. This trypsin, this digestive enzyme, was injected into the nucleus to degrade to degenerate the proteoglycan content, which is the the main component of the nucleus, okay? So this was used to simulate the degenerative process. Hey, let's inject this, let's get it to degrade, simulating that process. So they had one group where they used the trypsin, they had another group where they did not, they had a group where they used the trypsin and then loaded the disc through mechanical loading, another group where they did not inject and they also loaded it. So they had all the variables covered. And here's what we found, okay? 
Injecting the trypsin into the nucleus did, in fact, break it down, right? Simulating a herniation, right? You've lost it. It has been enzymatically degraded. It's gone. The same thing that happens from a herniation. You lose a herniation. Let's say they do a microdiscectomy. It's gone or it just kind of leaks out and calcifies and it won't regress. Okay, it's gone. What they found was that even if they ejected the disc with trypsin and lost the proteoglycan content, they lost the nucleus, it got degraded, by loading these discs, by mechanically loading these discs, they saw that the act of loading, which basically means pressure, force, right? Same thing as strengthening exercises, increased that content. So the trypsin injection brought it down, reduced it, loading it, then increased the biosynthesis of this. They didn't inject disc material back in. They didn't inject proteoglycan content or matrix or these things. They didn't inject anything. They loaded the disc in that same nucleus that degraded, was able to rebuild and regained the proteoglycan content. It regained it. Right? Just like when someone takes your blood, you go donate blood, your body regenerates blood. Right, Your body's pretty amazing. It doesn't just completely lose everything that you take from it. Okay, And I know certain areas of the disc are avascular. Not all areas uh, can recover as well as others. Okay, There's certain regions that are vascularized, certain regions that aren't. Okay, So this is why a lot of this kind of nuance has been out there. But in this particular study, they were able to reduce the nucleus and they were able to rebuild it through loading. This is huge. This is huge. This is why when you see studies such as runners versus couch potatoes, runners versus couch potatoes, runners will have larger discs, more hydrated discs, stronger discs because of the impact load. Those who are regularly exercising, squatting, deadlifting, spine loading exercises compared to those who aren't, Larger, stronger discs, okay? Loading can increase your disc. So if you have a disc herniation, if you have a disc herniation and you get a microdiscectomy, actually within the first three months, I just read about this today, within the first three months after a microdiscectomy, that's when it's most likely for you to re-herniate a disc. Wonder why that is. The root of the issue isn't being resolved. You're probably not going through the right rehab. It's just being cut and, all right, go back to doing whatever you're doing because the pain's gone. You return right back to whatever you're doing. Your body's not ready for it. That area of the disc is weakened because it hasn't been remodeled. You haven't gone through rehab and then boom, you re-herniate it again. They say, oh, let's do another surgery. Happens all the time. Happens all the time, okay? So let's say you get that surgery. It's cut, okay? You don't lose that disc material forever. You can regain some of that nucleus through load, Proven, okay? Additionally, let's take someone who doesn't have a herniation, who didn't have a surgery, okay? There was another study I showed, I talked about this in a previous podcast as well, where they took two groups of people, those who were sitting for many hours at work. One group didn't take any breaks. The other group would stand up every 20 minutes and bend forward, backward, side to side for five seconds each, every 20 minutes. And they found that at the end of the day, the group who took that movement break had more hydrated, larger discs than those who didn't. So what does that tell us? Okay, you can manipulate the hydration and the size of your discs. You can manipulate it through movement. So if someone says, hey, once you herniate a disc, yeah, that's just gone that's done, your your disc is narrower forever. That's not true. It's not true, okay? Now, there is some indication that if the nucleus is essentially eliminated and there's absolutely no hydration in the disc anymore, the chances of it coming back are not as clear, okay? But once again, does that mean someone's gonna feel pain? No, it doesn't mean that person's gonna feel pain. It doesn't mean that, okay? We know that thin discs does not equal pain. I'm just saying in regards to regenerating it, we're getting bigger again. If it's like totally, there's nothing left, it's, you're not going to get the same resorption. That's, that's been seen. Okay. But if you have a herniation and you're like, oh my gosh, is, can my disc 
you know, can my disc regrow? It can, it can, and it can regress. That herniation that came out, it can regress. That's what happens to pretty much all of our clients where we reduce their sciatica, we regain their low back motion. We know that the disc obstruction is no longer there. I mean, we do that with pretty much all of our clients. Like that's well known. Discs can regress. They can resorb back to where they came from. So that fluid that came out can go back in. All right. So you didn't technically lose it, but even if it came out and then your body gobbles it up and goes away and you're like, Oh my gosh, well, I feel better. Like my body gobbled it up. My macrophages came out and ate away that disc material. So it's no longer hitting my nerve and all this stuff. And I feel better, but now I'm left with less of a disc. No, there's something in there. You can stimulate it again. If you have a surgery, you can stimulate it again. Loading, weight, exercise, movement can stimulate the biosynthesis of this proteoglycan content that comprises a majority of the nucleus. This is excellent information. Okay. Of course, looking at this proteoglycan content matrix and this collagen, then you could start to think, hey, are there other methods I could do to promote the you know, the regeneration of this. Well, this could be supplements that promote collagen, right? Collagen formation. This is specifically type two, but you know, collagen supplements, um, different things that promote proteoglycan content production, which is basically involved with all articular cartilage, all joints. So joint supplements, glucosamine, chondroitin sulfate, any other ones that promote healthy joints. Okay. This could potentially help stimulate that further. But load, load is king here. Load allows us to adapt. Load is what our cells communicate with. Load. One particular question I will get from this podcast is, well, what if you're loading too much, right? What if you're, you know, doing too much? Well, the chances of anyone who is listening to this podcast, or I would say, honestly, the chances of 99% of the human population loading their spine too much, that would cause degeneration in the long run is very, very slim, very slim. So there is a threshold. There is such thing as too much load with torsional effects. There have been studies that show that too much spine loading with torsional movements will promote degenerative changes. It will promote degenerative changes. So the question is, well, how do I know what too much loading is? That has not been quantified. I cannot tell you that. But I think the chances, and and this was with studies, right? This was like with mechanical, like machines and doing these things like aggressive, okay? So I can't give you an exact number on that, but I think the chances of like 99% of the human population overloading their spine and doing these torsional movements that would be to the point of degrading it are very, very, very low, very slim, okay? If you're just going and squatting and deadlifting a couple times a week and pushing yourself and going pretty heavy with that, that's not gonna be enough to overload your spine. Okay, that's that's not going to cause disc degeneration. I've made pod, I've made a podcast on, uh, I think I I think I titled it powerlifting, and uh, disc height or uh, powerlifting and spine health, something like that. I also made a podcast uh, called uh, I think squats do not compress your spine or um, squats and deadlifts and decompression, something along those lines. And once again, we found that these things do not compress. Your spine, they do not, you know, squatting and deadlifting do not compress your discs in the connotation that most people think. Like they imagine their discs getting squeezed like sponges and losing all that water and just getting pounded on every day. That's not true. Okay, squatting and deadlifting has been shown to improve our disc height and to improve low back pain. Squatting, deadlifting improves low back pain. All right, these are necessary things we need to be able to do. So the chances of you overloading them or anything like that is quite slim. All right you'd probably have to be some kind of freak to be able to do that. So you can be comforted in that. And to be honest, all of our clients in our program, they're squatting and deadlifting by the halfway mark. That's actually integrated into the program. We want to be squatting and deadlifting pain-free with confidence and slowly working our weight up so that you know you can do these things again without pain, fear, or worry. This is part of our program because everybody should be able to squat and deadlift. Everyone should be squatting and deadlifting. They're fundamental movements. I'm not saying you got to be maxing out every week. But you should be able to do it with at least a little bit of weight to know that you can do that functional movement. And yes, those are functional movements because they apply to our everyday function. It's not using it as a buzzword. And to know that you can do those things pain-free is very confirming of the state of your lower back. 
So most of our clients, before they're done with our six-month program, they're squatting and deadlifting and running and playing basketball or doing whatever sport they want to without pain, usually before they're done graduating. The first phase of our program is meant to get you out of pain. The second phase is meant to get you back into sport, activity, doing things at a higher level so that you have a higher level of quality of living and you know how to maintain it. So we are not about the fragile mindsets here. We are about promoting anti-fragile mindsets. We're about promoting self-care. We're about promoting a proper plan, a proper guidance for these types of disc, lower back, and sciatica issues. We want you to feel empowered and in control of your destiny. And yes, you might need some guidance, and that's what we're here for. We guide thousands of individuals around the world through this process, a step-by-step plan that you can follow every day, knowing that you're making progress on a weekly basis. This is what we do. This is what I do for a living. This is my job. And I don't want you to be lost without a plan. I don't want you to be the hundreds and thousands of people who are out there who are being told, hey, once your disc is herniated, you're done, you're screwed, uh, or you know, you have a surgery, no, you're weak forever. No, these things are not true. And with a proper rehab plan, you can get pain-free, you can get back to your life, you can get back to playing with your kids and, and weightlifting and squatting and deadlifting and just being able to bend over to touch your toes without sciatica burning down your leg, you can get back to these things. You just need a plan. And you just need to be willing to take that step forward and invest in yourself and invest in a better future. That's it. And that's what we're here for. So if you're ready for that step, submit an application, join our private Facebook group, Rehab Fix Low Back Program, get in touch with us, shoot me an email, make that decision now. It's time for me to get out of pain. My future will be different because six months from now, that's the length of our program, six months from now, you could be looking back at this decision saying, this is the single thing that changed my life. And you could make yourself really proud six months from now. You want to look back at your decisions right now and know that you made the right thing for you, for your family, for your friends, and for your future. So let us help you. Let us change your life as a team so that we can show you how to do it. And we can guide you step by step with constant communication along the way. This is a premium program. We don't accept failure as an outcome. We do our very, very best for you because we're invested in your success. If you are watching this podcast on YouTube, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave a five-star rating and review. This is a zero-cost way to help give back to the podcast and to help it grow and reach more people who are ready for a solution, who are ready to commit to a plan and invest in themselves, and they deserve an opportunity. So the more people that we expose this podcast to, the more people we get to help the more lives we get to change. Share this with a friend as well. As always, move more, move in nature, move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.